This is the famous Washington Square Park. You got a lot of characters here. This is where the chess tables are. We play chess here, we've been playing chess here. Everybody knows, we congregate here. Everybody knows each other for about five to 10 years. No There's a lot of going on in the chess area. Uh, only four pieces against the girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> and you're down, Tony. Hey, there's hey, there's a man. Hey, there's a man. Hey, there's a man. Hey, there's a man. You might spend four to ten hours a day playing chess. Look, look, look. It's the move. It's fine. No, it's not. Look, look. 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 When I first started, I got hustled a couple of dollars here and a couple of dollars there. Now I'm doing a lot of hustling. Take this in the, take this money in there, baby. This is money. This man. What the man is that? Stupid. Today we'll have a session or two with some people. We'll give them a little pointers in chess. Or they'll give me a little pointers in chess. Or I'll play somebody better than me and lose a couple of dollars, but I'll learn something. So it's not really hustling. It's enjoying ourselves, especially the feeling that we get in this park. We enjoy ourselves very, very much. Now, there is a family out here. There is a guy, Theo, he's Greek, about a multi-million dollar. Uh, Multi-millionaire, I could say, that, that's what he is. There's another guy, uh, George, he was here, he went back to Greece. Theo is Greek, I'm Puerto Rican. Uh, we got another guy, a Russian guy, Paul. He's in the family. Riverby's in the family. Livermore is in the family. And Livermore seems to be the best at this park at this moment. Why are you running from me when I put big beef on you? I'm cool with him. Huh? Nah, like a mother. No, that ain't gonna do. We never really got to know each other. So, big That ain't gonna do with big beef involved. It's not gonna do with big beef involved. Good night, Mr. Bob. Man, put an ass kicking on video, man. That's good night. Good night, Mr. Bob. Good night. Now that you come in, where are you going? You came through the door, you did it before. The score this up, game two going down. All the games going to be like this. All of them. I ain't going to let them win the game. I have to beat this man like a dog. You a dog? I have to, because you know, you're challenging. You're challenging your pastor. Oh. Livermore plays, he gives, he makes about 50 to 60, 70 dollars a day here, uh, teaching people, uh, playing people for a couple of dollars here and there, or teaching them for like 10 dollars an hour. So like I was saying, there is a family out here. Uh, we know each other uh, for like many years. We come here, we play day after day, day after day. Some of us might go on a vacation, we'll come back and we'll play again and we'll see each other. But mostly, wherever you go, wherever we go, we'll still come and be here at Washington Square Park playing some chess. There's about 10 people in the family. A couple of them are hustlers, I would say. So all they do is play for money, and they'll take your money any which way they can. A couple others, like Theo, like to lose money and win money. But mainly, he's got a lot of money, so he doesn't care about throwing a couple of dollars away. You got another old man, he's about 70, or s in his late 60s. His name is Tony Springer. He's a retired lawyer, lives on Fifth Avenue, about two, three blocks away from here. And he also comes out, he uh, plays chess. He's not very good, but he likes to bet, like up to $100 a day. Mostly, he loses all these games. He's not that very good, but it's not the money. It's, it's just, we give him entertainment and we have fun and that's it. Right now he does paintings throughout the park. You won't notice him be, uh, being a chess player because he dresses up with a straw hat, cut off glasses, and uh, he looks like a bum. He looks just like a bum, Look at a, a derelict. But he, the man will fool you. You'll never know whether he's, 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 he's a player or a, a, 
a, just a passerby or whatever, but he'll come and do paintings. He's a pretty good painter. He's a pretty good painter. He'll, he's got uh, his paintings in about two or three galleries around Soho, NoHo. And each painting that he does at the park, he takes it from, he takes pictures, he makes his paintings from chess players. And he'll make 250 up to $500 in these galleries for these paintings. Uh, specifically, he's a nice old man. He is a nice old man. Uh, we have Livermore. He's not working. I'm not working at the moment. I just got back from Las Vegas after four months there. Here's Livermore here coming over. He's a he's 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 a good player. He's a very good player. Uh, do you have anything to say, Mr. Livermore? I had a crush on Jimmy for a long time. <laughs> Uh, Livermore is bisexual. <laughs> he does like me. Uh, We've known each other for about 10 years. And I've had a crush on him for all these years. But he got all the tired now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. I'll see you later, Mr. Livermore. You know, don't get him serious. He's, 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 he's kidding, folks. That's Livermore, Mr. Livermore. He is a very good player. He is a top player in the park at this moment. We have another guy sitting down with him, Mr. Ralph, big guy, about 350 pounds. He's a he's a weak master, but nevertheless, he's a master. He's very good. We have a lot of guys out here that are very good chess players. Chess players in this park, when they go to tournaments, like at the Penta Hotel, the New York Open, or in Philadelphia, the World Open, they'll come out rack, raking some bucks. Because a lot of top players in New York come from this park. We have one guy. His name is Jinjin, well known as Roman. He's the top in the world. He is considered the seventh to eighth ranked in the world. He comes here, it's an incredible sight. The man can spot people, rooks, knights, any piece you want, he'll spot you. It'll be hard without a queen for him to spot anyone uh, that's, that's an expert, a queen, but nevertheless, he can still do it and beat you repeatedly, repeatedly, repeatedly. I'm telling you from experience, this guy is an, a deadly player. Uh, anywhere he goes around the world, anyone he plays in chess, he, he'll beat him. He'll be able to beat him. And he'll be able to play anyone around the world for money and win. And you gotta be very careful about him because you don't know who he is and how he looks like. To me, he looks like Fred Flintstone. The guy likes to play a lot of backgammon. He plays cards. He's a born hustler. Well, what do you play for? What did you play for credit? Also, chess is a big ego, ego thing. A lot of these players, when they get down here to play chess, they start playing each other. One thinks he's better than the other. The other one thinks he's better than him. I just had a session with a guy where he's trying to take my money for a couple of dollars, but he can't, he's not, you know, he's not at my level. He's an A player, but he's trying to take my money. I mean, the guy, 
He's, he was doing very well, making uh, $35,000, $40,000 a year. We call him the bear out here. And all of a sudden, within the last year, he lost his wife, he lost his kids, and now here he is. No place to go, no place to sleep. And he's trying to take my money. So it's a big ego trip. All the top good players in the park hate to play themselves. The real good ones hate to play themselves because they they figure that uh, they don't want the, the word going around that this guy's better than him and this guy's better than this and that. Only a grand master. So mostly the pots is like us, the A players, the experts, will play each other. And it's a big ego trip. I kill my opponents. One day we'll lose. I'll lose to a guy a whole session, 20, 30 bucks. Then the next day I'll come back and I'll beat him for the 30, 40 bucks. Uh, it's a big ego thing. Where is my measly opponent? He got scared to play with grandmaster of the world. I, I, I don't like to lose money, but I like to play and enjoy myself. But sometimes I'll lose some cash, I don't mind. And most of the time, me being Jimmy J, one of the one of the guys that rarely ever loses any money because I don't allow that. World Grand Master of the World. There's a guy called a Sand the Sandman. His name is Sammy. He's black. He's a very he started out on 42nd Street, I believe, hustling down there in the streets, playing 50 cents to 100 dollars a game. With, with a lot of tourist people. They set up their boards out on the street and they go out and they play. Sam is the second best, or he can be a tie with Livermore, the Sandman. He is very good. That's right. I am the chess demon. Realize, recognize, and understand these things. Because if you don't, I'll crucify you out here. I am world grand master of the world. Self-proclaimed. I'm gonna call you like Nisa used to call me. You don't have Come in, baby, Kate. <laughs> I have designated myself to rule over the chess world. I'm gonna tear a hole in this man's back the size of a watermelon. Right, now that boy didn't have this pocket, somebody else paid it for it. How can I walk over to you? Ten minutes after five. I'll pay you. I'll pay you. Put it up. Boy, you got a dollar in your pocket now? Yeah, you got five. I didn't bet all this time. I don't need fucking five dollars. I got him. 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 <laughs> I, I get rough with it. Well, he's fighting for He's for rough with This is the sad man. I am inevitably the best. Self-proclaim and self-acclaim. Now, all the good players of the world, they will not play world grandmaster of the world. They only play each other. Did you ever hear Mr. Kasparov? you have nothing. I give you Nietzsche Ball, as my <laughs> Russian partners would say. Very good, very good. Nietzsche Ball. Very good. Tony, come here. Nuclear warfare should happen in this moment. We will be annihilated. But the record of our miserable life on this planet and this miserable Sandman, he is
is this, we, call, we used to call him the speed demon because he was so fast on that clock that he can give me five minutes to one minute and beat me within 45 moves because he is that good. If I make one mistake, I am dead. Lose one piece, I am dead. That's why they call him now the Sandman. He's like, he's like, you, you watch Dunes? He's like the worms in the sand. He slips and comes right up underneath you and grabs you by the throat and you're dead in that game. We got Mr. Ralph, the guy that I said weighs 350 pounds before. That guy there is a very, very good player. And every time he plays, he won't play someone unless he knows he can beat him and he'll try to beat him. Not, not, not that he'll try, but he usually is successful. 98% of the times, and you'll see him raking some big bucks. He, he's a good, he, he knows how to pull in the money. He knows what guys to play. Hello. Nobody wants to game. Hi. Hey, get that camera out of here. See, a lot of people that play chess in this area, it's an escape goat for them. They'll come here, they'll leave their wives, they'll leave their kids, they'll leave their girlfriends like me today, and we'll come here and we'll play. What is it? You say those words down and I have a four? Wait, if I have black, I went on this side. Absolutely. You, 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 no, 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 no. you cannot ask us during the, the course of the game. You've got to no. get, each time you lose, you come next to you. Oh, no, 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 no way. No way. Calm down. Calm down. Let me explain something. I don't want to hear anything. I'll give you arts. I'm supposed to take no, the floor whenever I want to. Calm down one second. Okay. 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 I mean, I lost a one or two girlfriends already just because I come down here for a couple years and play chess. They think I'm doing something else, but I'm not. I'm here every day because I love to play chess. I play a few 
moves with John and I offer him a draw and he takes it. And people can't believe it because like, you know, here I am, this guy out of nowhere with 2,000 rating, getting a draw from a 2580 player. Don't you just love it? Back him up! Back on, man. You can wiggle out of anything, everything like this. Everything you do! You're a better player. But I have to win this money, sir. He could have a draw by perpetual check, but he's just another guy who wants to win so badly against the low-rated fish that, that he overextends himself and gets a lost position. He, he offers a draw, but I decide that, you know, I might as well go for it. You know, if you have a winning position, you want to just win it. So I refuse the draw, and he Bojovic loses on time. And he steams out of the tournament room. He, he takes his score sheet, and he rips it up. The photographers are all flashing their bulbs. I'm number 87 on the wall chart. I mean, like, technically, I don't even belong in this tournament. OK, so we should go here and let start. I say the bishop. I say we can this isn't the division. I say he's playing the great sand man. It makes no difference. I can do anything. Ah, you guys have a relationship, is that it? Yes. I am the great sand man. Well, the next round appeared with Spassky, former world champion, and he's actually rated number four now. Although Spassky is said to be like a bear, he could win at will when he was when he gets. You know, when he wants to win, he can win. Well, I'm playing Spassky, and 20 moves go by, another close Sicilian, and uh, Spassky offers me a draw. And I was really puzzled because he, I thought he had a better position, but I take it, of course. But I could argue with that. So I'm tied for the lead with Spassky. Get him, Sammy. Get him, love bones. Got him. He got him under control. He got it working. Tony. Tony. The end is near, Tony. Yeah. He plays a Grunfeld defense, which is considered a sharp counter-attacking type opening. And he gets into a very messy middle game position. Well, Potasnik and we both get into time pressure. It's, this game could swing either way. Of course, like a lot of people are puzzled why I haven't lost a lot of these games, but I just don't know. I was like playing incredible chess here. Like it's something, some some spark in my soul that ignited and made me like world class competitor overnight. I've never had a result like this. It's like it's like an ordinary person like off the street like um, being put on the mound in a, in a World Series and, and pitching uh, a perfect game. That would be the analogy. It just it, it just couldn't happen. It's it, it's it's considered impossible. But I'm doing it. It's like Fisher winning his matches 6 0, which he actually succeeded in doing, or winning the US Championship with a perfect score, which he actually did. It's like, it just can't happen, but it's happening. So somehow I, I beat Vitasnik too, and I go into the Potomac round, the, the, the last round, the second to the last round toward the end of the tournament, and I'm paired with the, the number one player, Kael Tao. If you don't beat this man every game in a row, he won't play no He think he's too good then. Right, Vinny? I love playing Casino. He's the best. I'm playing Tao, and of course, it's a, it's a combinational game. I decide to play a modern defense, Tao's white. And he, uh, he immediately launches an attack with all his pawns. And uh, every move I make, it's an, an only defensive move. Finally, Tao sacrifices a knight, and then a bishop, and then finally a rook. He sacrifices a rook with check, and it looks like my king is just going to get killed, but I keep making only moves, and finally Tao has to settle for perpetual check because he's run out of pieces to sacrifice. Tony, I love it. I love it. I love, I love it. it. I love it. I love it. Love it. Love it. is a, a very strange competitor. He's known to, to uh, play in tournaments and and sell percentages of his winnings to, to uh, you know, all and sundry. Is he a gambler? He's, he's, a, he's a famous gambler. He's, he, he would win twenty, thirty thousand dollars in a chess tournament and then gamble it all the way in backgammon on, on, in Washington Square Park. So I'm pretty friendly toward Gingy, and we play a bunch of moves, and finally, like, 
Jinji offers me a draw. And I take it, and tumultuous applause happens in the audience. Like Everyone's amazed, except Roman, who says to me, well, Larry, I knew you would win this tournament sooner or later, or a tournament similar to this. Might as well tie with you know, me. I just won uh, $30,000, the largest prize in the history of chess. Um, of course, like other organizers are now approaching me saying, like, you must be in our tournament. We must have you. You're, you're, you'll be renowned. Maybe Markin will be known everywhere. Well, um, of course I agree, and um, I'm ready to go on you know, like all the promotional shows and you know write my collection of best games solely from this tournament, of course, <laughs> so far. But I don't understand that I start to shake. Uh, I feel so nervous and faint. And the room starts to blur. All the photographers, all the lights flashing. I, I'm getting dizzy. And then suddenly I hear this voice. Uh, I hear this voice. It's, it's, it's yelling at me. It's, it's, I hear this banging on a door. It's Larry. It's Martin. Wake up. <laughs> Wake up. <laughs> Got a perfect tournament for you. <laughs> Two 1700s and an 1800. You could win that. <laughs> Wake up. <laughs> Wake up. <laughs> Alas, it was all a dream. This park is a very fine park. We have a lot of good people here. We have a lot of people that, that, that come, we enjoy ourselves, and it's just, it's just a beautiful feeling. We got a lot of people that go to school, college, NYU back there. Uh, we have a lot of people that play chess and uh, don't have a place to live. But still, somehow or another, they seem to come back to the park and whether they're doing bad or good, and this is the way people live in this area. Mr. Tamarkin, would you like to be martyred by world grandmaster of the world? Would you? Would you? Would you be? Would you please sit at your miserable chair and be punished because you didn't study chess properly? I'm going to kill you, Grandmaster, because <laughs> I'm going to show you that I am great chess player. You are not your Grandmaster title means you are shit. You are little feed him, Yum. 